Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to another episode of Cataloging Catalogs, where today I do not actually have a catalog for you. I have instead some pattern books from both Butterick and from Vogue, both from 1949. And we'll be beginning with our Butterick pattern book here from winter 1949-1950. And of course the original price was 35 cents. And I actually quite like the ensembles we have going on here on the cover. We have this rather simple taupe colored or camel colored wool, I'm assuming, dress with a brown belt, matching gloves, handbag, and shoes. No surprise there. No hat with this one, although this gal has a lovely hat with this bird wing feather arrangement coming through it here. And again, brown gloves paired with that. I assume this is the same uh, dress they are showing here because it only has one pattern number and then with the jacket over the dress to create a suit-like look. These actually, looking very closely, are externally sewn darts. You can see those on the outside. Smaller dart fullness than I'm used to on mine, but uh, they are small triangles that are um, the darts are sewn on the outside of the fabric as opposed to the inside of the fabric and then pressed into place to create a sort of decorative accent. And of course we have the darts angled here on both the skirt and the waist of this. And a rather high, almost tipped up short little V neckline here with a necklace worn over it. So it's always good to know that that is an option of ways to wear necklaces as well as just directly over the neckline if it is high enough as well. Now in these magazines, we have not only the patterns and styles that will be available from Butterick in this upcoming season, but we also have advertisements for fabric and notions and other things in general, including companion colors here. So you can make a mother-daughter match up in Avondale com companion colors because Avondale fabrics are dyed in the yarn, get the exact same colors in solid shades and stripes. So um, these are not over dyed after the fabric is woven. The stripes are not printed on, it's in the weave of the yarn is what they're trying to convey there. And we also have Skinner True Who back again and every thread washable pure silk. Some very glamorous houseware going on here it looks like. Looks like these are um, as opposed to evening gowns. You have nightgowns, hostess gowns, slip and a blouse in Skinner silk. We do have lots of children's gifts here including some stuffed animal patterns and children's wear. I will scan all of this for you, which is unusual for me because I don't usually bother to, to scan the children's wear in these, I know, um, but it's just not my area of either expertise or interest, sadly enough. But we have some gifts, lovely underlings and lounging clothes for her. So we have some pajamas with some high-waisted trousers here, some house coats, including one with a front zipper and a lovely frilly little slip here, and then slips that are more practical to wear under clothes, perhaps. And we have gifts, thoughts for the young in heart who apparently desire separate little hooded cloak garments, gloves, which if you make a pair of gloves for someone, that is a true gift and shows way more patience and love than I could ever possess personally. So congrats. Um, but also lovely shawls, a vest here, and then a after ski or just plain lounging shirt, long sleeves, button front closing. Then we have some silhouette details and fabric fashion advice over here. Again, I will scan all of these pages for you to go ahead and browse through. We have coats, variations on classic themes, belted or swinging free. So we have these lovely princess coats here, and this one has even my new interest in princess lines, the double princess, which is something I want to try more and more here, where the princess seam line is split into two, and therefore the amount of dart fullness can be distributed between these two lines, and they seem to, in this case, go instead of through the apex on either side of it about an inch uh, within an inch of the apex there. And you can see with our more swing coat like styles, um, and so, as opposed to being fitted with all this seaming, these just have that dart above the bust line again. So we just have uh, one dart up into the shoulder and then the from the uh, bust line and through the waist it is left hanging free. Of course, this one is belted, but these are more of that swing coat style that's coming in here in 1949. And then it suits cast slim shadows with trim skirts in soft tailored jackets. Whew. And these are some good outfits right here, like this. Yes, thank you. And the details on this, buddy, uh, both of these actually, hmm, would be fiddly to sew, but are so gorgeous. Significant dressmaker details, I have to agree. And we do have gloves paired with all these suits and necklaces actually worn, tucked in. Uh, this one, there's a blouse on and then a necklace over the blouse as well. Plenty of layering going on here underneath the suiting even. I tend not to pair necklaces with suits, but perhaps it's something I should try more often. And we have some blouses and skirts here, including this lovely uh, wrapped front or faux wrapped front gathered blouse. Crop sleeve blouse sparks your wardrobe in satin, fail or jersey, 
quick and easy to sew, sizes 12 through 20, 30 through 38, 25 cents for the pattern. Not bad, quite a deal on these patterns back then. Also, look at this very fun situation going on over here. This is a blouse that is belted, um, so this is actually hip length, but it has this crossover along the front and then also here along the peplum a bit. Um, this is easy enough to do. Pattern drafting, of course, the pattern will be asymmetric, but you can definitely add this little, like if you had, you know, imagine that wasn't there. All you would have to do is draw on a little square here um, and have your, you know, left and right of your pattern going on. Of course, you didn't, you don't need it to extend on this side as well, but um, easy enough to do, but quite a striking look, I would, I would agree. But we have pleated skirts, an A-line skirt with large pockets here, some pencil skirts, including this one, which has the darts done at more of an angle. So they've just taken, you know, your normal waist darts would be here. They've just taken those and pivoted um, as if these are our pivot points, not an apex, obviously, because this is the hips we're talking about, not the bust. But you can pivot darts along the waistline as well. You can pivot them into the side or uh, closer into the center like this is done here. And we have some soft tailored one-piecers, aka dresses. We still have our button front dresses here, of course, very popular throughout the mid-century. Uh, the rest, the style around the center button closure changes, but the popularity of the shirt dress goes on and on. Uh, not particularly with me. For some reason, I don't love a shirt dress. Uh, it's just a quirk of my own personal style, though. You may love them, and I commend you on wanting to do that many buttonholes, because that's not a, a very fun time. This dress here, we have the waist dropped slightly to have this very, like, princessy very Sleeping Beauty pointed waistline, uh, dropped waist here. And then we have our dart fullness in a side dart here. Of course, there could also be a shoulder dart hiding under here. You would not know if you wanted to split the dart fullness under a collar like that if there was one in there. And both of these dresses have an A-line shaped skirt on them with a center front seam. It's not uh, gored or paneled any other way. It's just has that center front seam going on. It does look like the back of this one has a center panel that's a little bit more full on 50, 58 here. And again, high collar necklaces with these deep v's something i wouldn't think to pair together myself um but the dart fullness on this one you can see the waist is all smooth here there's no side dart going on here it's all up in these shoulder tucks so there's three or four shoulder tucks it looks like up here and that is where our dart fullness has been swung from the apex we have this lovely side little waterfall piece on this now six gourd skirt so there's three gores across the back and three across the front here this is just an a-line shape that's being created with those flared panels we do have a sleeve that's slim enough to require buttons here at the wrist, which again would be fiddly, but is very, very pretty. And then we can see, of course, this has a single waist dart here up to the apex. This one here, we have, again have a smooth waist going on here, but from the apex we have sort of tuck dart up here into this neckline and then another one next to it to distribute that dart fullness up into the neckline and kind of create this gathered almost scarf-like neckline but um, it's also hiding our dart fullness in there within those tucks. And then, of course, there is this waterfall again drape kind of overskirt panel going on here. It looks like, you know, it's not even part of this seam. So it's just a shaped panel that gets sewn in here. And then we have the soft wool dress features neckline interest and asymmetric detail. Yes, look at this. Talk about getting into 1950 here. We have this collar that wings out on one side. It looks like a shawl collar otherwise. And then this side extends further and there's an under collar that crosses over it to create sort of like a, a duck beak of a collar going on here. But I like the asymmetry, it's very fun. And again, we have the flared gores to create the A-line shape of this skirt and a single dart to the bust again. Down here, now that's a fun dress. We have again, a tuck up into the neckline and then the rest of the dart fullness is used as gathering across this asymmetric line here. Um, I am going to be making a video soon here about different gathered styles, how to use dart fullness as gathering and even to add additional gathering if your dart fullness is not necessarily enough for a style. Um, this probably has a little bit extra gathering in there, depending on what kind of fabric you're using, how soft the wool is, you would need more or less gathering to create this look. And this is rather a straight cut or slightly flared skirt on this. And the sleeve actually looks slightly dropped on this as well. But the skirt has this yoke with a funny little folded extension that kind of continues the asymmetry of this. It's actually very pretty. I wouldn't mind mocking up this style sometime. And the dress next to it has, again, simple A-line skirt with a center front seam, easy enough to do. And then we have a kind of pinafore almost looking top. It almost looks like it's layered over a scarf, but I think this is actually sewn into the neckline of this dress. Um, but we have a angled side dart up here to the apex. No problem there. We know how to swing our darts around. Thanks to my dart fullness video, correct? Yes. Hopefully that will clear things up. I still get a lot of questions about if it's possible to move a dart. If my dart is in one place, how do I do this style? You can always move the dart anywhere you want 
um, as a starting point to either following drafting directions or just in general to do whatever style you wish, you can always move your darts around on the bodice. And we have the tailored wool dress. So we have soft, AKA a little bit flowier um, with gathering, not thick, thick wools. And then we have the tailored wool dresses, which are a little bit more suiting inspired, it seems. This trim suit dress has a perky flyaway collar, huge jutting pockets, reed slim three gore skirt. So this is a pencil skirt and the darts have been transformed into a princess line down this pencil skirt. But then these side panels, obviously there's like a little panel here that probably goes maybe this far. I mean, you could do the whole panel, but it'd be thick and kind of a waste of the fashion fabric to do so. But this stands away here from the rest. So this piece, you could cut the skirt and then you just trace another of the side, cut it down to the size you need. And then you would flare this piece out so that it would have this additional curve in here. And then this one has a button obviously to close that. Um, if you would like to add width to the hip, this is why you, why you would do this. If you wanted to minimize width to the hip, I don't think this would be the way to do it. But I enjoy the rather um, like French Revolution hats going on here with these suits as well. And we have the star of Rosemary Radio Show wearing a jacket dress ensemble for Butterick. Betty Winkler, star of the daytime serial Rosemary, sponsored by Ivory Snow and heard Monday through Friday mornings over CBS, is photographed in the Rosemary Resort dress and jacket ensemble designed by Butterick. The sun back patio dress has a casual collar, halter neckline, and flared four core skirt. A fitted waist length jacket offers smart covering up for varied occasions. Can't have a halter neck with a bare back just anywhere, you know can't wear that to brunch. But you can see, going south, turn back to the sun in patio dresses. So lots of bare-backed, halter neck, and strapless dresses here as we enter the 1950s. And fuller skirts on these dresses as well. This is uh, looks almost like full circle skirts here. Um, these are gored, so these are panels that flare from the waist. Um, but you can like just cut a full circle skirt on wide width fabrics now. Back in this time, it was rare to have fully wide width fabrics like that available, especially for the home sewer. So a lot of things would be paneled so that they would fit on the thinner width of, wide, of yardage available. But now you don't necessarily have to panel things as much because you can usually get wider width yardage. And you can see this dress here, this strapless dress, 4890, doesn't even have a waist seam. So it's just fitted as a strapless dress with double ended darts throughout the waist along the back here. And then it has a back center back zipper here. And they are suggesting fringed fair in shantung linen or rayon crepe. Strapless princess dress takes in the morning sun. Matching bolero covers you for luncheon or shopping. Flared skirt on dress, kimono sleeves on jacket. So all in one sleeves, kimono sleeves. Which, funny enough, kimono, actual kimono, have a seam. So they're technically not all in one. You know what I mean. And we're still going south. Pick a good cotton crop, it says. So we have another strapless dress here with very fun pocket detailing along those seams. So they're using the seams in this larger skirt as a way to incorporate pocket detailing here with this trim that of course matches the rest. And then the shawl is reversible, has the pink on the one side and the stripe on the other, which is very fun. This is almost like a short swing coat in cotton as a beach cover-up with a, again, dart up into the shoulder to fit things to the shoulder above the bust line and then flares just directly from below there. We have another all-in-one sleeve that really drops off the shoulder here. You can see this still has a little bit of gathering under the bust and up here at the neckline. That's where our dart fullness is helping to shape this. And we have this chic little sleeveless blouse with absolutely gigantic pockets on the front of it to pair with our fly front pencil skirt, which has a front slit here. Again, notice how long, I mean, obviously this is an elongated fashion sketch anyway, but look, notice how long the skirt length is. It is like mid calf here on this one. Again, I always just like to point out the hemlines because they do change so much throughout the 20th century. And if you are trying to nail down a specific decade or wondering if you can pass something off as, you know, if you have a 70s skirt that's quite long and you're thinking, oh, maybe it's too long to be 50s, probably not. Um, you can probably get away with the longer lengths of skirts from the 70s and 80s and passing them off as 50s because the 60s skirt hemlines went a little bit wild, but here in the 50s and then in the 70s to 80s, the hemlines were usually knee length or longer. Ooh, and now we have green and black in a page. So they really aren't talking to me here. We have the costume ensemble goes out in the daytime and stays after dark. So formal enough to wear in the afternoon and then into dinner. Jacket on the ensemble in sheer wool or fail has a fetching dressmaker suit look. So almost looks like a suit during the daytime. Contrasting yoke and soft turn back collar. Dress repeats the yoke theme, belts its middle and looks comfortable with short sleeves and a slim but easy to walk in skirt. And yes, this has a 
curvy yoke with a contrast fabric for the jacket and then a curved yoke here on the dress as well. I'd love to know what fabric they had in mind for this because like some sort of a ribbed round blend, round wool blend or something would be quite divine. And we have this green buddy down here, scoop neckline, brief kimono sleeves. So just a slight grown on sleeve here with a larger neckline on this. A slim chemise type belted dress. Jacket fits to the waist and has loop collar framing the V neckline and cuffs on the three quarter sleeves in contrast. So this collar is actually, what's going on here is it's giant and then it's just looped down and tacked underneath to create this bow like looped collar, which is quite fun. Again, we have a shoulder princess line on this that opens up a little bit below the waist just to flare a tiny bit. We really have reached my pages because I would wear all of these. Um, we have ensembles for town and travel in lightweight wool or fail. The jacket features a rising neckline. So this neckline here is a very small little v-neck um, on both the jacket and the dress, but it is a raised, slightly tipped up neckline. I'm actually going to be doing this on a jacket I'll be showing you here soon um, in the next month or so, doing that modification soon. The jacket features a rising neckline, jutting collar, three button closing, and a slot seamed pocket here. So this is a princess seam up into this yoke. There's a curved yoke here from the neckline to the arm side. And then from that arm side, there is a princess seam that again comes back out lower than the waist, comes back out to the side seam, the hip line. Dress has a high neckline, smooth fitting bodice and classic brief sleeve. So this is a set in sleeve, it's just short. And then we do have these cross darts on this. Might be fun to just demonstrate this just for fun. Um, it's not difficult, but it is very fun to have the skirt darts are both pointed to the same position at the waist and then the same for the bodice. Otherwise, this dress is incredibly simple. It's a very high neckline, slightly curved V-neck. I like the neckline a lot. Um, and then the only real detail or change going on from the simple bodice block here um, or the dress block is the way the darts have been crossed at the waist like that. And this again is the dress from the cover where it looks like they have ironed and uh, sewn the darts on the outside of the fabric as opposed to the inside of the fabric. So the little triangle of extra dart fullness is seen on the outside. It's pressed here towards the side seam, it looks like. And then you could do contrast top stitching on that. So if you did like a black dress with like turquoise top stitching, it could be quite fun. And to take you dining or dancing in crepe, jacquard, satin, or tissue wool on the dress, a U neckline cropped kimono sleeves and drapery that swathes the hips then cascades down the side. High button jacket fits snugly, has soft turned collar and smooth kimono sleeves that taper to the wrist. So this is an all-in-one sleeve that has been extended all the way to the wrist. I show this in my um, green and black house coat video here on the channel. I can link that below for you to show how to do the long all-in-one sleeve like this or kimono sleeve as they call it. Again, looks nothing like actual Japanese kimono, but there you go. And the dress has just the regular grown on sleeve or all in one sleeve with this very scooped neckline, which again, they're not filling with a larger necklace. They're still wearing a collar with that because the fifties, I guess. Um, this forgot to mention on the jacket has a angled side dart and ends at the waist. Of course, you would have to have a jacket that ends at the waist to fit over all this drapery going on in the skirt, which is absolutely lovely. Um, and then this dress, the dart fullness, instead of being in a side dart, all the dart fullness has been controlled as gathering along that side seam, which is again, Easy enough, you could use the same exact pattern, uh, bodice pattern almost, to do this, having the side dart here and just gather it instead of sewing it into a dart. Again, I'll be going over using dart fullness as gathering in a video soon. We have tweeds for the coat dress, the versatile suit dress, and wool jersey for the casual dress with arresting details. Absolutely arresting. So yes, here on the wool jersey dress, we have all of the dart fullness split into these many darts here. I'm not sure if this has, yeah, one piece of wool jersey accented by grow grain. I think this probably means that they don't have a waist seam here. So all these darts are double ended darts here, radiating from the center. The V shaped tucks to create the yoke on this one is quite fun. But of course, I'm drawn to the burgundy and green color scheme over here. Checked tweed by Mildridge, tissue weave tweed by Siray, and hunt club tweed by Juilliard. I would love all three of these ensembles if someone wants to just make them magically appear. We have a double breasted kind of coat dress here, but I really quite like the triangle shaped pocket that mirrors, I mean, there's only a pocket on this side, but it mirrors this style line of the double breasted to have this angled pocket coming in here. It's quite pretty. We have a little bit more photography going on over here. We have undercoat flattery, bold or subtle with prints. So again, we have dropped this waist seam into a little bit of a point. So it's a slightly dropped waist, obviously at the side seam, it's right at the waist, but it dips down a little bit in the front with a center front seam. And again, this A-line shaped skirt, which has this tuck or a little frill detail about halfway down, down the hip here. 
And if anyone wants to just hand me this dress, I have that hat, so if anyone just wants to hand me the green and black dress, I'll take it. This print dress brightens the midwinter scene. Gay but subtle print silk in a deftly fashioned dress. Looped reverse collar, so this is that collar again where it's a very large triangle that loops back down. So you have these loops and it's folded like so. And we have some festive fashions for our holiday parties here in the winter 49. Short and smart from five o'clock on. So here's our cocktail dress recommendations. Again, we have this overlapped faux wrap style that we saw in the blouse earlier here with a gathered midsection. And then of course the sheer overlay on the skirt. But I of course want this one with its rather 80s drop sleeve. <laughs> Wouldn't be good if you were very short waisted uh, because the sleeve and your waist would meet and kind of create a block across the top. But we have again, a angled dart up into the apex and this dropped sleeve here this is not an all-in-one this time, it is a set in sleeve, but same effect could be achieved. And then we have this lovely draped shawl going on here around the waist. And that same, again, bodice sort of style coming into play over here. We have a side dart on one side, and then the dart fullness for this other side of the bodice has been asymmetrically done into gathering. Again, this is a dropped waist on this as well. I'm not sure what they're doing with the darts on the underskirt, but some of that could be up in here if they wanted to, depending on how they're under layering this. Um, it looks like there are darts on the skirt back. And then we have, of course, this large ruffle across the top that looks like it is gathered into this. I think many would go for the more princess-like dress here, but I, I quite like this one. And this with the deep tux is quite pretty too. Although, of course, I would want it in solid black and no one is surprised. Even this in solid black would be much more regal in the way that I desire. And we have our free pattern, which is, it, it's just, a cuffs and a collar, uh, scalloped cuffs and collar. But you know, I'm gonna scan this, so if you need a collar pattern, you'll be good to go. We have some class leaders ensembles for our school kids here. We have adjustable dress forms, under the tree gifts, yardly gift set, courtly kit, man about town kit. Make it the right way with dot snappers. So we have some dots snaps to sew onto your Chillin's coats here. And we have Sag No More Worsted Wool Jersey. But what I like most about this advertisement here in this lovely dress that I would definitely wear um, are these tucks across the waist here. They're actually like uh, layers that are folded up, it looks like. And I think they're sewn smooth on this side. And then the tucks are left hanging open on this side so that they fall down like that. It's quite elegant and pretty. And here's that suit in color here. Learn millinery at home. Mm. Can I send away for this these uh, booklets, please? How to make crepe paper pine cones. We should make some for Christmas once I have a tree to decorate. And again, our coats in color here on the back. Princess coat and tailored coat dress. Yes, thank you. And then we have our Vogue pattern book as well. Again, from February through March of 1949. So fashions for the season we have just passed here, at least in this hemisphere. But uh, we're blending in with the blue table a little bit here before I open this buddy up. We have 107 new designs, fabric wise portfolio for spring. Here we have a two piece dress and jacket, see page nine. And they've paired this sort of light camel colored suit with a coral glove, scarf, and lipstick that coordinate here. And of course the handbag and the hat seem to match the suit here. But we have this punch of color with the yellow and coral that matches the lipstick. It's all about the matchy matchy here in the mid century. And we have Hafner Bengalin here. Another fabric that's not as easy to come by anymore. It's sort of a ribbed, fabric. I, I quite like working with Bengal and it's just hard to find it in anything but polyester. But the suit here is fun. This is a extremely Terry Mugler suit. I'm going to put a picture of a Terry Mugler suit that has the same detailing later on. That's why I love Terry Mugler so much from the 80s and 90s, because he was using lots of details from the mid-century. And you can see here this suit has these turned up details, like almost like kind of cuff details like along the hem. And even the shoulder shape is quite similar to what Mugler was doing in the 80s. And here's some fun ensembles. Miran by the Yard, slim, crisp, to the point. These are modern lines, pure arrow grays, solid and white lined. These are modern colors. Pair them in yarn dye worsted suitings made for easy handling, swift sewing. These are Miran Moderns, the suit, Vogue pattern number 6676 in Mrs. Sizes 12 to through 20. And once again, the fabric is available from a fabric shop in New York. Back when the garment district was in New York and it was actually a thing and they had lots of fabric, I assume, and, and lots of places making the clothes. And there's always, of course, the option of lining your jacket in the same fabric as your dress so that you can do this fun effect whenever you take your jacket off. 
And we all can appreciate the lovely feathers going on here with her hat. Rayon crepe in colors and designs as stimulating as the first breath of spring to wear now and in coming seasons at quality stores and ready to wear and by the yard. Again, look at this hemline. This is just above the ankle, honestly. This is almost a full length garment. And again, excellent feathers going on here. Although this looks like some sort of a band costume to me. I'm not going to lie. This suit, classic and delicious though. Flinched from the gentleman Juilliard's yarn dyed worsted wools. The more wool suiting, the better, in my opinion. More talk about fabric here, including gabardine in the dress that looks like a coat, the dress that will go on solo spring streets. The color, a new vivid navy, made more vivid by starched white linen collar and cuffs. With a red flower pinned on to match the red shoes. Very fun way to incorporate a pop of color in a more neutral outfit like this. Here we have our free pattern for this one. It is a lovely little hat pattern. This little hat carries on a neatly sculptured look of pruned locks, shows off a pretty profile. We should try and make this hat, huh? It's only, what, three pieces? Can't be too hard. And we have our Vogue Couturier designs. So you too can look this chic walking through New York. Especially in black and mustard, which is quite a good combo. Of first importance, the coat and dress ensemble. Faintly flared coat, buttoned high and lined to match tucked silk dress, flannel and crepe, or all shantung. And wouldn't I love to have this sort of greenish mustard color wool? There's a lot going on with the hem of this cutaway suit. Cutaway jacket stands sharply away from the hips, below waist, pleated inset in back, slim skirt. So we have a slightly dropped waist actually, actually here in the back with our back dart coming past the waistline a little bit, flaring out into these box pleats along the back that also fall into the front side piece here. <laughs> this is definitely a Vogue pattern. We've upgraded from the Butterick. This is a higher of higher difficulty to draft and to sew even for that matter. The three pieces gorgeous, of course, as well. Oof. And the three pieces gorgeous, of course, as well. Yummy. This black suit, completely classic. Back interest suit. Slender jacket softly curving at the hip line. Slim as a pencil skirt juts out sharply in the back. Oh, so it has a back flare on the skirt. Another detail you sometimes see in Mugler, actually. And I quite like this sheath dress with the kind of art deco detailing here with the paneling. Gains distinction via squared lap seam detail on the skirt. Simple uncluttered bodice. Yeah, extremely simple bodice. This is just the standard bodice with the dart fullness placed into a dart down into the, not even the side seam, it's actually at the waist. It's just all the way towards the side seam along the waist. Three quarter sleeve on that. We have some very harvest colors for spring here. Don't mind if I do. We can make it fall all year round in my world. We have this lovely pumpkin orange curving bands, slender but softly curving suit. The reed slim skirt is bordered with curving bands. So we have this curve on the hem of the jacket that is echoed in the scallops on the bottom of the hem of the skirt. Again, where can I find a lovely wool crepe in that color? I do not know. We have slanting tucks on this next dress here. Starting to look a little bit more 50s with the fullness in this skirt. This one has a back flaring peplum. So in addition to the like A-line shaped skirt on this shirt dress, there's a little back peplum, a little bustle going on back there. I think my favorite is probably this dress, which kind of looks like my <laughs> spiderweb dress that I made. This one. Uh, imagine it with a black overlayer, you know? Not too dissimilar. The beginning of it all, a red coat. A red coat is a tonic to any young wardrobe. A surprisingly neutral color, it blends with other colors, can be worn in town or country. Here we have organized a basic red coat wardrobe for you to follow or vary. So we have our red swing coat here, again, Shoulder dart on that buddy. Swings from the rest. And what to wear with it. So the black fell, a perfect fabric for a late day and later. Slim skirt with a touch of black, with a touch of back fullness. Double circular peplum falls gracefully from a small waistline. Well, only if you happen to have a small waistline, but thank you, Vogue. Um, short curving kimono sleeves. So all in one sleeves on this bodice. Looks like there is a raised uh, empire waistline on that. And then the ruffles. 
I think the best way to do something like this uh, is to do it so that the peplum is removable. So like make the peplum a like sort of tie on or hook on belt. That way you can wear the dress with or without it. More versatility. But it's nice to know that you can wear your red coat with any of these looks here. A yellow day dress, a brown suit, and even a formal gown in rustling black taffeta. And if the beginning of it all is a black coat, which for me, let's face it, it would be, we can still pair that with tobacco brown and white buttoned up at the back. Deep curving yoke, full flared peplum, narrow skirt. I like how that says narrow skirt when this is obviously an A-line skirt, but all right. I enjoy all of these outfits, except for maybe the gathering on this pleated skirt. Loosely pleated skirt. Eh, I don't love a lot of fullness at the waist on a skirt, personally. I prefer a circle cut, which is more like this. This is also kind of a half circle skirt, it looks like here. Um, this is gourd skirt. This is a uh, princess line that continues onto the skirt. There's no waist seam here. This person also, whoever owned this magazine before, has circled this and checkmarked it, so they definitely want that one. And we have the stole story here. Having a nice shawl. Easy to make. Yeah, it's literally a rectangle, so you truly cannot go wrong there. I don't think you need a pattern, though. <laughs> yeah, some more advertising here. It's funny, this is like all ads, and then we have a little bit of actual uh, content in between. We have the waistcoat in here, so you can get a waistcoat pattern, aka a lovely vest. And another vest pattern and tailor a shirt in a variety of fabrics. Some of the same ads that we saw in the other magazine here. Saray makes Kare or Saray makes the cloth. You can make the suit. How about you make the suit as well? <clears throat> It'd save me some time. Feminine toned tweed with a whole new temperament. Thin, soft, subtle in texture. Here particularized in coral. Well, very light coral, but yes. I quite like this striking exception. In the season of in a season of little ladylike prints, muted all over designs. Here's your bold, aggressive print to prove the fashion rule. A stylish representative for the multitude of incomparable Skinner rayon prints of every dimension and design indicated for spring of 1949. Geometrics run wild amongst abstract leaf designs with splashes of brilliant color and white against dark grounds in five different color combinations. I'll take four yards. I'm sold. And here on the back we have a lovely bright purple pink green and blue oh snow crepe okay between the font and the weird words they use for these rounds my own odaga a spring yes yeah, snork crepe snork crepe <laughs> a spring favorite of smart women high fashion prints in delightful colors feather light cool moderately priced buy the yard at better stores now does anyone know where i can find a better store but that was the Vogue pattern book from February, March, 1949. And then of course we have our Butterick pattern book from almost a year later in the winter of 49. So the next winter kind of technically should have done this one first, but similar zone all here from 1949 on the cusp of the 1950s. And you can really see those 1950s styles coming into play here with those swing coats and the uh, slimmer, more like fitted 50s dresses. I really love this zone here between the 1940s and 50s. It's my favorite time period between 19 maybe like 46 and between like 52. It's kind of my favorite zone to play in. So I hope I can find more books like these from this sort of time period. Maybe something for summer. I'm definitely looking for things like this from fall always, even though we did get some nice fall colors today, which I do appreciate. But I always am looking for more ephemera and always have more to get to to show you all here. So let me know kind of the zone, early 40s, mid 40s, early 50s, late 50s, you would like to see next here on Cataloging Catalogs, and I'll pull a catalog to share with you again. And thank you, as always, for watching today. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.